good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining um, the Ascari Academy team and uh, our webcast series that we offer uh, every week. Um, I will start immediately this, uh, this short webcast um, today. Uh, thank you again for joining. Um, the short web webcast today is the aim uh, is to gather the latest updates of um, on immigration law and practice caused by the spread of coronavirus worldwide, uh, with a focus on uh, British citizenship and um, spouse visa. Uh, the situation is particularly uh, pressing for people that are uh, in UK on an expiring visa and are unable to leave uh, because of travel restrictions or maybe because they are self-isolating. So <clears throat> hence we uh, wanted to dedicate a short webcast today to the challenges that uh, people are facing in terms of application for uh, British citizenship and uh, spouse visa application. So let's start with the first topic, which is the British uh, citizenship. For those currently residing in uh, in the UK who are uh, who were preparing for uh, the British citizenship uh, application, um, COVID-19 has certainly created uh, a huge uncertainty. Uh, under the UK immigration law, those who wish to acquire British citizenship may be eligible to do so through uh, birth, descent, marriage, or simply as the final step to residency in the UK, having already acquired settled status either via uh, permanent residence or indefinite leave to remain. Another way to, to, uh, to call this process is the uh, naturalization. The government's announcement to extend all visas whose immigration permission to remain in the UK expires between the 24th of January and 31st of May provided a much needed um, security and reassurance. However, um, those with long-term uh, residence in the UK who were hoping to apply for uh, British citizenship may remain unsure of their options. So there is a, a big, um, let's say, grey area on, uh, on the topic. So first of all, can you still uh, naturalise in the UK as a British citizen despite the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, the answer is yes, you can. And the government website states <clears throat> that the process of applying for British citizenship in, is one which at present remains open to all individuals who meet the, uh, the main uh, eligible criteria. And what, what should you do in terms of um, the ceremony if you were uh, due to attend one? Currently, British citizenship ceremonies are uh, not being held, with current, of course, social distancing and lockdown measures in place, all ceremonies are uh, no longer going ahead. To accommodate this, uh, the Home Office has announced uh, that successful applicants now, instead of three months, they have six months in order to book their uh, British uh, citizenship ceremony. So at least there has been uh, a little bit of um, flexibility in terms of the timing. Um, officially, the process of obtaining British citizenship is not legally complete until the, the applicant has um, physically uh, attended the ceremony and there is currently no legal provision in place to allow you to do this electronically, so everyone must uh, just uh, wait for the time being. Um, how will the application for British citizenship be processed within the standard time frame? Of course, uh, as, we, as, as it is to be expected, one crucial area of the application process that has been impacted by the COVID-19 is the current processing times. The applicant um, the application uh, to become a British national that typically may take up to six months now, it may take much longer, so um, the apl applicants need to, to be waiting. Um, focusing on the so second topic of uh, today's webcast is uh, the spouse visa and what are the challenges for all the couples out there that uh, are um, ongoing to 
apply for a spouse visa or have already applied or they need to start a fresh new application. So what are the pressi pressing issues that uh, needs to be considered uh, for uh, a spouse visa application or extension with, uh, within the coronavirus lockdown? Uh, the UK spouse visa, commonly as known as the UK marriage visa, uh, allows non UK nationals to join their partner in the UK. So in order to apply for a marriage visa, you, bu you must be married or uh, you must be in a civil partnership recognized uh, within the UK with a British citizenship, uh, sorry, a British citizen, a UK settled person or a UK refugee. So you have to be um, in a partner relationship with one of, of the three. Uh, the main eligibility criteria uh, which uh, needs to be, meet, uh, to be met are uh, you have to demonstrate that you are in a genuine relationship and you need to uh, meet financial requirement, which is one uh, where home office presses uh, a lot uh, during their uh, decision making process. Um, you can apply for this permit if you are aged 18 years or older, you are married or in a civil partnership recognized within the UK, you are married to a British citizen, or a UK settled person, you have been living together for at least the past two years and you need to show that um, with, with um, proof of residence, um, pictures, emails, correspondence, uh, rental agreements and everything. And then you have to be uh, another option is that you are engaged or you hold a fiancé visa and will be uh, getting married within six months of arrival in, uh, in UK territory. So by overviewing uh, all these requirements that um, uh, outcome of their spouses applications, there are a few uh, pressing uh, issues and challenges that uh, come up. Uh, one is the timing of the application. Second is when uh, one spouse at the moment uh, happens to be outside the UK territory um, is meeting the income requirement and the delays to marriage ceremonies. So let's, let's uh, touch up uh, one um, of uh, uh, these main points is the timing of the application. For example, uh, we have to recognize that the government for the first time in the history has relax uh, certain visa rules. On the, on the 24th of March, the Home Office announced that anyone whose leave had already expired after the 24th of January and subsequently can't leave the country due to uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic and travel restrictions will have their visas extended until the 31st of May. Whether this is enough, um, given that uh, travel restrictions are uh, not uh, have not been lifted yet and we don't know when we will start being um, able to travel. This, is, this of course needs to be revised by the Home Office. And like most other countries that are automatically um, rolling um, out visas extensions for all the people whose visas are expired, foreign nationals in the UK will need to apply online and notify the government of their circumstances to fail so they, they might get into trouble. Uh, however, the married partner visa and the fiancé visa immigration rules are still firmly in place and the applicants must need the eligible um, or must be eligible uh, to meet all the requirements. So uh, one uh, important issue that raises here is how uh, do people uh, today uh, meet the minimum requirement. Uh, job losses of course are sadly becoming uh, the norm in, uh, in, uh, in UK due to COVID-19 and um, for example the, the, the UK uh, British, uh, the British partner or the non-European um, spouse loses their job for various reasons uh, due to COVID-19 because maybe they need to take time off to stay with their partners or maybe they have been 
uh, made furlough or redundant. Uh, so many reasons out there where they can, uh, they might struggle to meet the minimum income requirement of, uh, of the spouse visa rule, which is uh, annually uh, 18,600 uh, pounds, or uh, in alternative, the couples uh, need to show that for the last six months, they have had a certain um, amount in their bank account uh, in continuity. So um, these two are uh, two important um, economic financial requirements that which we will see how uh, applicants will be able to meet um, in the next coming months. Uh, for the time being, it is still unclear what the rules are around applicants that are uh, impacted um, financially by the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, there is a big risk of um, applic applicants who are seeking a spouse visa extension or a switching to a definitive leave to remain. So uh, we will see if um, there will be any um, flexibility from um, home office. Uh, another point, another pressing issue that uh, arises from uh, the con uh, COVID-19 is uh, the delays in place to marriage ceremonies. Under normal circumstances, couples need to um, marry, must marry in the UK within a period of six months. But at the moment, it is most likely that wedding ceremonies won't be happening anytime soon. If your wedding has been cancelled and thus rendered your fi uh, fiancé visa invalid, the government may still consider the merits of your case. But what we advise is that you should speak to um, a legal professional to see if there is uh, any step forward or if you can uh, if you can start a successful application so we we, we really uh, because there is not much clarity and there is a big gray area in the in this um, topic we advise you to to seek guidance as soon as possible there is also some relief for applicants in terms of um, extending their visa uh, or submitting a fresh application uh, the Home Office is uh, now granting applicants the opportunity to make their application while they are in UK. Uh, the general guidance uh, from Home Office allows people to apply from UK to switch to a long-term visa until the 31st of May. Uh, this includes applications where you would usually need to apply for a, a visa from your home country, not from within UK. So there is, this is another uh, flexibility, but still the timing is, it appears to be very short because 31st May is um, in the next uh, uh, two weeks. So what will happen uh, in June if uh, the travel bans are not lifted, people cannot travel, um, the visa immigration centers in uh, their home countries are not still operating and so on. So there is the English test as well. Centers are uh, suspended overseas everywhere in Europe. So there is many factors that play um, into um, um, having a successful uh, and time, timely um, visa application, spouse visa application. So we will see in the coming weeks if there's, uh, there will be more uh, updates and uh, we will make sure that uh, will uh, keep you posted and keep you updated through our webcast or our newsletter as well, which we uh, send weekly through um, Ascarian Partners uh, newsletter on Monday. Uh, I hope uh, I covered a few of the important points that needs to be covered within the British citizenship and spouse visa in case um, you have any um, issue or any doubt, please do not hesitate to contact us on the um, website, email and phone number that you can see here on the uh, bottom uh, right of uh, my screen. Uh, briefly, I would like to show um, our next appointments with uh, two more webcasts this week on Wednesday uh, 20th of May and on Friday 22nd of May these web webcasts are in Italian language 
And on Wednesday, we have a webinar instead of a webcast, which lasts um, uh, one hour with uh, Paolo Battaglia, which is a chartered accountant here in the UK. Uh, I thank you again for your attention and I hope to see you next, uh, next time in our webcast series. Thank you again and uh, have a lovely week, uh, lovely week and lovely evening ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.